Uh, Abe Gordon at 92.9 always bats lead off with us on Mondays to break everything down from the weekend from an Atlanta United perspective. So uh, welcome to the chaos that is League's Cup. It, it is it was very League's Cup-ish. You know, we, we've kind of converted it into its own adjective and predicate now, now where there is moments of there are moments of chaos and there are matches of chaos. And then you just have some that are just mind numbingly double zero goals and you're wishing that you could get 90 minutes plus a shootout back but Atlanta United did not give you mind numbing behavior they went to straight to the chaos in match number one yeah look there, there's no denying it and look I'm not uh I'm not one that's averse to drunk soccer matches I mean I've, <laughs> I've been parts of them and certainly uh, as a viewer as well I, I do enjoy them I enjoy them more when Atlanta United comes out uh on the winning side but at, at the end of the day uh, you did get a point, and, and so you were able to split 3-3 in regulation and, and then obviously lose the penalty kick shootout and just uh, a brutal uh, a brutal finish there for Bartos Sleesh, uh, who had to deal with it personally, uh, missing a penalty or not missing it, having it saved in regulation and then uh, unable to convert in the penalty kick shootout. So uh, you do give up two points to one point, but you're still right in it. You pretty much control your own destiny it is, is where we're at. If you handle business uh you know get santos on sunday you can still advance in this thing and it's a very forgiving tournament so we'll see what happens midweek between santos and dc united uh in a game that's now being played in in chester pa uh yeah, yeah not a great look there for dc united but look it, there were some good and some bad and that's what's going to happen often when a game results in a and we'll call it a high scoring draw uh, look, you're still dealing with the same issues and you're still being punished for the same issues. And the amount of mistakes that you have made this season in your final third that has directly, almost immediately in all, all situations, turned into a goal for the opponent is unforgivable. It, it, it's something that has needed to be cleaned up and continues to be an issue. And so this one was off the boot of Josh Cohen. It, it was a very poor clearance. It was, to be fair, it was mishit. It wasn't poorly intentioned. It was a mishit ball. Uh, but you you get punished for it immediately and go down one nothing. And you fight, fight, as this team has done all year, by the way, you fight, scratch, and claw your way back. Uh, into a, a situation where you can get a draw. Again, you had opportunities to take the lead in this one if you hit a couple of penalty kicks and and, and uh, do do that thing. But So you go to the PK shootout and all that. But look, it's just setting up a pretty wild tournament. Uh, and and it's, it's always wild when you're getting MLS and Liga MX squads. It's always wild when there's that many teams heading to a knockout stage. I mean, again, this is a round of 32 that you're trying to qualify, not just quarterfinal round of 16, none of that stuff. It is 32 teams advancing. And so it's a very forgiving tournament. You're still in an okay position because you at least got the one point out of the draw. Um, but again, it, it's a situation where it's just so frustrating because uh, the mistakes just cost you and cost you and cost you. And with very few exceptions this season, you haven't really been able to counter on the other side, right? Like you are forcing – turnovers in your attacking third you, you your press has worked but uh, with the exception I guess of the TRA goal with the exception of a couple of other instances you're being punished for it way more than you're benefiting from it and and that's got to change can we talk about Bart for a second yeah the the post-match sound and full disclosure uh Maddie was there and I was there and there were a lot of folks. I mean, there was the, the, the scrum that was there, but Maddie and I were there. Uh, that is not me, by the way, that is reaching out. Um, it was a difficult watch being there in person. It was a difficult listen, both in person and the second time. But I think what it does is it reminds us when you are the new guy, and you are in a you are in a situation that is new to you that is new to you on the field in addition to off the field and i mean you're adding also to the mix that he's a that he's a newlywed in, in all of this that what happened to him 
was it was a difficult watch, but I hope that we all learn more about people in a situation like that in hearing what Bart had to say after the match that included dropping a muted F-bomb in the post-match. But, I mean, he dropped an F-bomb off the top, and he, he, admitted, he admitted it. He used a different word about messing up. But I think it reminds us about how human these guys are and how human they are in these new situations. Well, there's a couple of things at play here. And the first one in regards to to Sleesh is that these are mistakes that athletes make. Um, and, and it happens to the best of the, the players in the world. I, I mean, we are, I mean, how many weeks away from watching Cristiano Ronaldo cry over a, a penalty <laughs> kick that he didn't convert? Well, no, I, I mean, look, the emotions are real, and certainly the tensions were different, and the stage was a little bit different. But we're talking about Bartosz Lisch, and we've seen Lionel Messi had one saved recently. We've seen Cristiano Ronaldo had one saved recently. Uh, and these are moments that happen when, when you're put in these situations. Um, and and it, it's, it, it is like the human side of it to see how tough, he takes it and uh, in, in how much it means to him. Even if it's not at the stage that Ronaldo's was, um, you can tell it bothers him. Yeah. You can tell he's impacted from it. Here's the thing. We need him to find a way to not be impacted from it be, be, because mentally he needs to be in the game in those moments. And, and this is not the first time we've seen – Sleesh make a mistake and it's taken him time to recover. Uh, now, at least in this instance, that second penalty kick was not in the run of play, it, it, you know, and, and he's got a week to kind of recover that mindset. Um, but this team still needs Barto Schleesh. Like, let's not get it twisted. There are frustrating moments, but he's been integral for, for what this team has been able to do on both sides of the ball this year. And so for him, it's tough. I mean, it's really tough. And obviously by the placement in the PD uh, penalty kick lineup, they tried to bury him. Um, yeah. Let's just call it what it was. They tried to bury him. You had a couple of other takers that were still available, right? Amador. Like Stian, Pedro, Josh. I mean, that's where And, and Ronald Hernandez was the yeah, other one. And, that's where you and so you were down to it. You, you went into sudden death and you had, you had already rolled through half of your roster uh, before getting there, and, and it's just tough. Uh, he was not in a good place mentally to take that second kick. I think you could probably see that by the design and the plan on that second kick. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, I, I look, it's not fun to watch a guy have a penalty kick saved. It's not fun because, especially in-game, I, I mean – First off, they didn't even call the penalty originally, which yeah. is a, a, it is wild. I was sitting there with you uh, before I, I went back to my booth. I, I like, dude, like there's a full arm extension with a turn of the body. Like it's the yeah. easiest call in the world. I don't know how it's not made live. They did get it right ultimately, eventually. Yeah. But the the difference between that is when the crowd reacts, when you have that moment and you think you're tying the game or you think you're taking the lead yeah. whatever the situation may be and then it doesn't happen it is it is just the bottom falls out emotionally and so it's a little bit different in game than it is in a penalty shootout but look uh, I, I mean you play enough of these things you're gonna have kicks saved uh, the confidence is is a little a little weak right now for Barto Schleich at least from the penalty spot but He's got to pick himself back up. The team's got to pick himself back up. And here's the thing. And we've seen it from time to time with sports. I think we've seen it from the Atlanta United fan base. They've got to pick them up too. And I think that's the important thing. And look, let's be honest. For the most part, I haven't seen a lot of yelling from the fans, from the 17s about sleesh this, sleesh that. I can't. No, they've been relatively supportive. And it needs to remain that way be, be, because that's what he needs, not just from his teammates, not just from the staff, but from the fans too. And, and when, when someone's going through it in this manner, and it's one thing for you to be critical when a guy doesn't seem to care, right? That's the important thing. If a guy screws up and he's like, whatever, I'm a pro soccer player, blah, blah, blah. It's just a game. That's not how Bartek Leash is acting. These are really troubling moments to him. They are really impacting him. 
Uh, and it's up to all of us, fans included, uh, to help get him through it, to help lift his spirits, because he absolutely deserves it with how uh, impactful he's been for the team this year. Yeah, and I thought it was key in the early stages of this where – Basically, Brad Gazan, after the, the penalty kick miss and sudden death, Brad Gazan basically sprinted to Bartos Sleesh and was one of the first guys to sit there and talk to him. And so the the players themselves on the roster, you know that they're going to continue to to put their arm around him, put be in his ear, make sure to, to remind him about all these things. Because with the last couple of matches where we've seen Bart uh, work his way forward as a part of almost like a 4-1-4-1, and see him jump into the play and be more engaged. He's creating issues for the opposition on defense, trying to account for numbers and things. And so, the 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 idea that he is he's helping out in the the offensive push is part and parcel to his evolution that we've seen so far this year. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. And the one thing that he needs to to continue to do that while also being impactful defensively is not being his own head. Yeah. He can't be thinking about what he's – and you'll say this about any athlete. Like, most of these top athletes, yes, there is some thought, but so much of it is just unconscious processing and just reacting to what your body and your brain is telling you to do without thinking about what your body and brain should be telling you to do. And, and we got to make sure he's not in his own head, and, and that's what's important. You can't have a situation where he second guesses, should I be pushing forward? Am I going to be able to recover defensively? This, that, that. It, it, it'll eat you alive. Uh, uh, that sort of mindset will eat you alive. So we just need him. And, like, when you look across any league, any team, any player, the best of them, when they're at their best, they're free-flowing. And that could, that's been the truth for I mean, however many years soccer has been played. The more free you are on the field – as an individual, as a team, uh, the better you're likely to be. And so we just got to make sure that that he's got that mindset, the, the freedom to do what he thinks is dangerous and the right play and, and without getting too caught up in uh, his own mentality. And I think he will. I, I think in the moment there, there are those emotional drops and issues. Uh, but I think, look, you've had uh, – you're going to have a, a full week off for him to kind of reset, recover, and regain that that mentality. Uh, I think he'll be fine moving forward. In the 3-3 draw, what else stood out to you uh, against Saba? Keith? Always yeah. Saba. Uh, okay. Saba just continues to be incredibly impressive. And uh, Rios as well. Uh, I, I, I just – when I look at what you've lost off of this team in regards to your 10 and your 9, and for a long stretch – and we're still asking, and I'm still going to ask it, but – where are the goals coming from? How are they getting created? I think Saba has really stepped up. There's no secret there. He's been incredibly dangerous. He he, he works his tail off. He runs a ton. Um, but he's also looking to get inside that box and be dangerous. Uh, and then Rios, just for, for whatever it is, I, I never thought that he was going to be the goal scorer that he's become. And he does it differently than, than a lot of the top goal scorers in this league. There's no denying that. Um, but I mean, look, one of the things about being a good striker is being at the right place at the right time, um, working hard, putting in that extra, whatever it is to get some ugly goals. And quite frankly, not all of them have been ugly, but quite frankly, some of them are ugly goals, but that doesn't make you a, a bad striker. I think it's quite the opposite. I think that there's a talent to knowing where to be and what time to be there inside the box. And, and it, that's one thing you certainly can't take away. I did not think that Rios is going to come in and pretty much tally a goal per game, essentially, over, over, over the last eight, ten games, whatever the number is. I mean, he's been very dangerous, um, and a lot of that I do think has to do with Saba as well. All right, so what's your week like before you head north and we catch up with you from the branch? Yeah, I, I mean, look, really tuned in on, uh, I believe it's Wednesday, to that D.C. and Santos match and just kind of interested to see what uh, what United's going to have in front of them. They'll, they'll know on Wednesday night what they're going to need to do um, to advance against Santos at home uh, there on Sunday. But there's another cool opportunity here for, for Atlanta United fans, and that is on Saturday night, the twos. Uh, they're going to be broadcast live on 92.9 The Game. So 
um, 8 p.m. with, I think, an 8.30 kickoff. Uh, we've got MLS Next Action uh, coming your way on 92.9 The Game. I, I believe this is the first time that it's happened, certainly the first time this season. Um, and so that that's really cool. Uh, and, and that's something we, you know, we kind of talk about a number of these players. We've seen some of them in U.S. Open Cup, but, um, you know, it, you don't always have an opportunity necessarily uh, while you're driving. I know you guys do a lot of great stuff with them as well, but, you know, clickable links. Uh, but but it, this one's going to be right there on the radio. And so it should be a, it should be a fun one going against, uh, I think it's New England on yep. Saturday night. So that one's going to pop at 8 o'clock, and then we're all going to turn around and, and get ready for uh, – for Santos, and just remember that's a that's an afternoon game on Sunday, 3 p.m. Right. pregame, 4 p.m. kickoff, and so um, that one's going to be fun. That one's going to be really fun. And look, we we're, we're going to know what we need to do to advance. And you're either going to be chasing something or holding on to something. I, I mean, you're going to know. And in those situations, those type of group stage games where you're like, we need to win, but it needs to be by this many goals, or we need to to, to lo- draw or a loss, but only a one goal. I mean, just the situations can get real interesting in the second half if you know you need to tally more or, or stuff like that. So uh, really looking forward to that. That can be very fun. Yep, no doubt about it. Very full week. All right, enjoy your time, my friend. We'll catch up with you next week. You got it. Appreciate it, John.